Hello, and welcome to The Early Edition. I'm Seppi Motamity. And I'm Simon Crownshaw. And we're also really lucky to be joined by Brian from Magic Box today. Thank you very much. I want to first start off by saying thank you to Microsoft and thank you to NVIDIA for bringing The Early Edition here inside Magic Box. Yeah, and today, Seppi, we have a really exciting agenda, right? We're going to talk about virtual production. What does that mean? And all of the challenges and opportunities that that's provided to the industry. I think we're all familiar with some of the game engine technologies and other supercomputing possibilities that that's dri driven. Uh, and we're really lucky to kind of spend some time with Brian, who's an expert in that field, but also experiencing it in real time with customers all over the world. Uh, I think it's going to be a great conversation. Seppi, I, I think maybe take it off with the first question. Yeah, absolutely. So, Brian, we are inside of Magic Box. That's it's right. a virtual production stage that's mobile. So what does making the studio mobile deliver for creatives? Well, I think it opens up a whole world of opportunities, and they really tie into some of our core values, which are number one, uh, democratization and decentralization of this type of Hollywood caliber technology for anyone to use and making it available for people all over the country, all over the world to use. Um, I like to think of it as an opportunity to spread it across the country and get different flavors and different spice combinations of content being created. So kind of like uh, different cuisines you get in different parts of the country or different pizzas, for example. Like We know what movies look like when they're made in Hollywood, but what do they look like when they're made in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or when they're made in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, or you know Tallahassee, to, uh, Florida? Like What do we get when we see content created out of those different regions? And we really make that possible. We're able to bring the same technology you're seeing at the big studios here in LA down to wherever they want to be across the country. And I think that's really a unique opportunity that Magic Box delivers. It certainly feels that way sitting here today, right? I looked around the studio and I'm going like, this is amazing, right? It's like, I've been in many studios around the world in my life and I'm sitting there going, it feels no different, right? And the fact that you can take that anywhere is really, really unique. So talk to us a little bit about what does it mean for the creative, you know, creative teams on the ground working on Hollywood productions or broadcast shows and things of that nature. What does it really change for them? So Magic Box or, or virtual production inside an LED volume gives you a lot of different things. Number one, it gives you speed and cost savings because of that speed, but it also gives you control. And control equals better productions, higher quality, but it also means greater safety in those productions. So whether you're you know, worried about shooting a sunset shot and then the fog rolls in, you don't have to worry about that kind of thing anymore, or you're doing a car process shot and you don't want to have to worry about like the camera falling off the car onto the roads and things like that. You can have that greater control and safety right here inside Magic Box. That's fantastic. So curious, Brian, there are so many core technologies that are creating this level of production that we're seeing inside this truck. Can you take us through some of them? Yeah, I mean, we've all heard a little bit about what are the technologies making virtual production inside LED volumes possible, but they really can be grouped into about four different categories. Number one is the compute power, and really NVIDIA is at the heart of that. That's what's making it possible to render photorealistic content onto the walls. Um, the other side of that equation is the game engine technology that's actually doing the rendering, the render engines there to make that happen as well in real time. And that's obviously the goal for any type of production of this nature. Um, but then we have the camera motion tracking technologies, which is giving us new and unique angles, literally, on production with the parallax capabilities that we have. But even when we're using video plates, um, we still have that camera motion tracking. We can kind of bend the world to give us a new perspective, a more realistic perspective on the visuals, which is really important. Um, and then finally, connectivity to the cloud, which I think is massively important, particularly for our business model, because we are a mobile solution. We're not fixed in, in the world. We can go anywhere. We need to be able to connect and retrieve data, retrieve content, and more importantly, push it from the trucks directly to the cloud to be stored. And that's where I think you know, Azure comes into play and Microsoft comes into play. This is a great opportunity for us to take productions anywhere with those two tools. And in one of our earlier sessions, we talked about artificial intelligence, Sespi, right? And from your perspective, Brian, it'd be great to understand, we talked about cloud, compute, things of that nature. What does artificial intelligence stand in terms of helping things just like this? So I think you know there's there's some core uh, AI that we're seeing already in the compute processing things like that, um, but I think we're going to see a lot of AI in the future beyond like visual creation is going to be in the human computer interface type of uh, technologies that are going to evolve. Like we are in a human computer interface environment where we're going to see a lot of control happening through our voices, through our hand gestures and um, other types of peripherals. And I think that's where you're going to see a lot more AI kind of develop into the future, um, in addition to all the back end things that we're seeing already populate and processing in visual creation, things like that. 
I mean, I don't know about you, Steffi, right? But it seems like amazing progress over the past two or three years in this space. How are you, I mean, I guess for me personally, I'd love to understand, how are people leveraging it today? What are, what are some maybe real world examples of where you're seeing people gain massive amounts of efficiencies in terms of workflows or leveraging the cloud or compute or just stages like this? Maybe some examples would be great. I mean, if you go to any, see any Marvel movie, you're gonna see a lot of that, obviously Star Wars as well. Um, but let's get out of the realm of the big budget visual effects. Um, if you watch the NCAA tournament uh, just last month, every game opener had athletes inside of an LED volume. Um, every you know new show, they're, they're using LED volume technology. It might be a single wall, but they're using that technology already in a practical sense. Um, you're going to see a lot more of it in commercials and in lower budget TV and film, I think, particularly like in car process. Traditionally one of the most expensive, cumbersome types of production. We can now make that extremely efficient, particularly with Magic Box, because we can just take it right to the main set and set it up and you pull the car inside in just a couple of minutes and you're getting your shot. That's been efficiency that's never before been possible. So I'm expecting to see that really accelerate production at any level and actually open up the doors to do that type of production, whether it be car process, train process, spaceship process, what have you, for productions that normally couldn't even consider that type of creative um, because they just don't have the budgets before. So now you're going to see that type of opportunity happen all over the place. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, for sure. So, Brian, one of the things I'm really curious about is the environmental sustainability element of virtual production. I know it's something that we talk about often. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. So the, the environmental sustainability is one of our core pillars. Um, it has been since the beginning. We have long-term goals of enabling 0% carbon footprint in the productions that happen inside Magic Box. So this is something we're working towards every day. Um, the industry, the motion picture video production industry, is traditionally somewhat high carbon footprint. So I think there's a massive opportunity in the motion picture and video production industries to change the amount of carbon footprint that we're putting into the air, and I think Magic Box is the first step in solving that problem. We already have reports suggesting that just shifting away from green screen to LED, or LED volume productions is reducing carbon footprint in the long term. So we really want to promote that and get the industry on board, start using Magic Box, start using other LED volumes to help reduce the footprint that we're putting into the air right now. And it really does feel to me, just listening to you, right, in that media entertainment and sustainability have never really gone hand in hand until now, right? I think there's always been this balancing act of putting the experience first and sustainability second. And it feels with partnerships like ours, right, between Microsoft and NVIDIA and organizations like Magic Box, it's really the, a really unique opportunity to really change the game, right, um, between all the different elements that we pull together. So, Sefi, I don't know about you, but it's really exciting. That's right. I think it's going to make some really great impact for our industry. No, absolutely. I mean, with the processing power increasing the, the power year over year, we're using less energy to render content. With the ability to go to cloud, we're using less energy producing you know, tapes and cards and things like that. So we're, we're using less power, we're using less production energy. All of that's reducing carbon footprint omnibusly across the entire production industry. So it's very exciting to be working with companies like yours to make this happen. Yeah, we're excited too. Yeah, well said. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for joining us. It's been awesome. This has been super sweet, actually. Thank you so much for having <laughs> us on. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Early Edition. I'm Seppi Motamity. And I'm Simon Crouch, and we'll see you again soon.